Hi everyone and welcome to our next tutorial. In this video we are going to build 3D button using just pure HTML and CSS. I think it will be really interesting and helpful because you will be able to learn about some cool tricks and techniques using just HTML and CSS. So let's get started. As usually, first of all, let's describe what we're going to create. So as you see, we have here full screen background image. And in the center of the page, we've got 3D button. It's placed in 3D space. And when we hover over it, it's rotating with really nice effect. So I hope you'll be enjoying this little project. On desktop, I have created new folder in which I have two different files for HTML and for CSS. Also, I've got here another folder which includes an image for background. Let's go ahead and open this folder with VS Code. Inside index.html file, we have basic structure of HTML document. Inside head element, there are two links, one for style.css file and another for Google Fonts. Throughout this project, we're going to use a font called Slabo. Alright. Let's go ahead and run this file in the browser using live server. In order to get this extension, you have to search for it in extension manager and install it. Okay, let's place editor and browser side by side in order to work in more convenient and flexible way. and start building HTML markup. It's going to be a really simple. We just need to create div element, which is going to be container. And then inside it, we have to insert button. Let's assign to it class name btn. And also as a text right here, subscribe. Alright, that's it regarding HTML. Let's go to style.css file and write some styles. First of all, I'm going to create some reset styles. Let's select every element using asterisk and set margin and padding as zero. Next, we need to take care of container. So let's select it. At first, I'm going to define its width and height. Let's set width as 100%. As for height, I'm going to assign to it 100VH. Actually, we have explained how viewport height works in other videos. But again, in this case, we say that height of container should be 100% of viewport. Next, I'm going to set image as a background of container. Let's use here linear gradient. I'm going to pass here RGBA values. Right, 0, 0, 0 and opacity 0.7. Then again we need RGBA value 0, 0, 0 and opacity 0.8. Then I'm going to indicate inside URL path of image. We have folder called images. Let's select bg.jpg. Then I'm going to define position of background. It's going to be center. And also we need here no repeat. And lastly, I'm going to use background size property with the value cover. All right, so now background looks really nice. And the last thing regarding container is that we're going to place button perfectly in the center of the page. Actually, we will manage it using Flexbox. So let's write here display flex. And then we need to use justify content with the value center and align items again with the value center. All right, that's it about container. Next, we have to take care of button. So let's go ahead and select it using class name btn. At first, let's assign to it some usual styles, define width and make it 350 pixels then set height as 100 pixels change background color in this case I'm going to use linear gradient let's pass here two different colors first one is going to be 8539 
1, 6. As for second one, I'm going to pass here 6, B, 3, 0, 1, 9. Okay, so that's the way how our button is looking for now. It's really huge, but actually we need this. Let's go on and add some more styles. Get rid of default border and outline. Right border, none. And outline, none. Then let's go ahead and work on text. Change font family. Use your font called Slabo, 27 pixels. Then serif. Increase font size. Let's make it 35 pixels. Next, I'm going to make letters uppercase using text transform uppercase. Also create some space between them using letter spacing. Let's set it as 4 pixels. And then change color. Make it white. Okay, step by step, our button is getting nicer. Next, I'm going to add some shadow to text. For that, we have to use property called text shadow. Let's insert here the following values. We need 0, then 10 pixels. Again, 10 pixels and color black. And also change type of cursor. Let's make it point. All right. At this point, with customizing of button, we are done. It's time to move on and start transforming it into 3D element. First of all, we need to create a 3D environment for button. And for that, we have to assign to its parent element property called perspective. Let's assign to it value 1000 pixels. Actually, perspective defines how far an element is from the user. Now we need to rotate button according to X and Z directions. So let's assign to it transform property. At first, let's rotate button along X axis. Right, rotate X and insert here 70 degrees. So as you can see, button is rotated. But besides X direction, we have to rotate it along Z axis as well. So we need here rotate Z with value 30 degrees. All right. So that's the position which we want button to have by default. Now we need to give button shape of cuboid. Actually, cuboid is like a cube, but it has shape of rectangle. We are doing that in order to transform it into even more 3D element. I would like to note that this is going to be not quite simple stuff. We will use some advanced things from CSS. So I recommend to be more concentrated and focused on things that we're going to show. So we're going to use before and after pseudo elements. So let's select button with before pseudo element, right? BTN before. Leave content as empty, assign to it empty string. Then define width as 100% and height as 15 pixels. In order to make element visible, let's assign to it background color and make it red for a while. I mean, just for better demonstration. Also, we need to define its position because otherwise height and width won't be applied to it. So let's set its position as absolute. So here is before pseudo element. We need to change its position and place it somewhere here in front of bottom. So let's set bottom and right positions as zero. So the element has changed its position, but that's not what we want. Eventually, we need to rotate it along X axis by 90 degrees. All right, so as you can see, at this point, element is no longer visible. The reason is that it doesn't have its own 3D environment because it's a child element of button and it doesn't inherit 3D space from container. In order to achieve that, in CSS, we have property called transform style, which should have value preserve 3D and we have to assign it to button. So let's write transform style and assign to it Preserve 3D. Okay, now element is displayed back, but we have here another problem. 
By default, origin of transform is set as center. In other words, you can imagine that x axis goes in the center of element. In this case, we don't want it. We want to make origin of transform bottom. Actually, I know that this stuff is a little bit hard to understand, but that's the way how it works. If you have trouble to understand it, it will be better to test those things on your own. So let's go ahead and write transform origin and set it as bottom. Alright, so that's it what we wanted to get. Step by step we are getting the shape of cuboid. Now I'm going to change background color. Let's use colors from linear gradient combination. I'm going to copy second one and paste it here. Now, as you can see, it looks much better. So like front side, we need the same on the right side. We have to create it using after pseudo element. Actually, we're going to need similar properties. So let's duplicate this entire code then change before into after. First of all, let's change positions. Instead of bottom, we need here top. So you see element ended up behind the button. So we need to rotate it according to Y axis with value minus 90 degrees. So you see where element is ended up. At a glance, it looks weird, but the reason is that we need to change values of height and width. In case of after pseudo element, we need to switch values for height and width. We need width as 15 pixels and height with 100%. Okay, now we are almost there. The only thing that we have to do is to change origin of transform. In this case, instead of bottom, we need to make it right all right so finally we got here needed shape the last thing regarding its style is to change background color of after pseudo element in this case let's grab first color from linear gradient and paste it here okay that's it about button now we need to make it working i mean we need to create hover effect on hover, I'm going to rotate it along X and Z axis. So write BTN with hover. And insert here transform. Rotate X. With argument 30 degrees. And then we need rotate Z. With 0 degree. And finally for smooth effect. I'm going to use transition. Let's write here transform with duration 0.5 seconds. All right, let's hover over the button and you see that we have really awesome effect. Okay, so that's all about our project. We have created cool 3D button and I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video, then please subscribe to our channel and click the bell in order to get notified about newly uploaded videos. If you have any questions, then you can leave them down in the comment section. Thanks for watching, see you in the next tutorial.